Cruelty, self-doubt, and tragedy. Hollywood loves a comeback kid, but what has Brendan Fraser been through to get here? The film industry is rife with objectification, an issue that overwhelmingly affects women. Less discussed, however, is the increasing trend of sexualizing men on screen. Actors have pointed out that this is no less demeaning, and one performer who was heavily objectified early in his career was Brendan Fraser. Much of the success in his early career involved going shirtless, particularly in one of his best-known early movies, George of the Jungle, in which he spent most of his screen time dressed only in a loincloth. Fraser holds a less-than-stellar view of how he used to be portrayed. In 2018, he told GQ, I look at myself then and I just see a walking stake. The Jungle King was pleased to find he looked pretty good in Armani. Pretty darn good. All the same, he admits that this role as a buff but naive himbo was what ultimately earned his image as an action hero. All the same, the demands of this kind of role are exhausting, ultimately leading Fraser to turn down a reprisal of the role in George of the Jungle 2. Essentially, Fraser just didn't want to put himself through that much physical stress a second time. And while he may have passed over that role, the objectification that had plagued him in those days ultimately remained, setting the stage for several of his later problems. According to Fraser, in 2003, he was sexually assaulted by Philip Burke, a former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It was many years before he felt able to speak out about the incident. In his interview with GQ, Fraser explained how Burke groped him at an HFPA luncheon in the middle of a crowded room in the Beverly Hills Hotel. At the time, Fraser was left feeling overwhelmed with panic and fear, but the aftermath turned out to be even worse. After receiving a non-apology from Burke and the HFPA, he fell into depression and started to become reclusive. Soon, he was questioning who he was and what he was even doing in Hollywood. The attack on Fraser highlights that sexual assault is common for men in the film industry, with Vox reporting that 43% of men surveyed reported some kind of assault or harassment. For Brendan Fraser, it was the first of many issues that would almost destroy his acting career. He told GQ about how his work withered on the vine and how he felt like something had been taken from him. As well as retreating from view, Fraser found himself wondering if the HFPA had blacklisted him as he was seldom invited to the Golden Globes after 2003. Brendan Fraser's personal life often seems to have influenced his acting, and his early confidence is demonstrated by how close he came to the role that got away. In 2002, Fraser was in the running to play none other than Superman, and he was still clearly excited about dressing up as the hero, later explaining how it made him feel kind of invincible. Sadly for Fraser and his fans, the movie would ultimately be cancelled. He took the cancellation to heart and was left feeling like a failure. This was around 2003, when the alleged incident with Philip Burke had also damaged Fraser's sense of self-worth. Fraser subsequently took a role in Looney Tunes back in action purely for the chance to portray the worst version of himself and then publicly punch himself in the face. In his own words, I had it in my head that I had it coming. That's all, folks. Shortly afterward, feeling humiliated and despondent, Fraser largely retreated from public view. In times of difficulty, many people turned to their families for support, but Fraser would soon lose that option too. In 2009, he and his wife Afton Smith divorced, further derailing his career. The objectification piled on Brendan Fraser in the earlier years of his career seemed to never really go away, and it continued to plague him well into the 2010s. Tabloid newspapers such as the Daily Mail, well known for their mean-spirited celebrity gossip pieces, would periodically post unflattering photographs of him together with demeaning comments about his appearance. Websites like Gossip Mill weren't much better. In one instance, the site published an article that skirted over the fact that Fraser was taking a beach vacation to enjoy spending some time with his children, instead placing the focus on his apparent weight gain. Over the past decade, people have become increasingly aware of body shaming and its many deeply negative effects. In particular, the phenomenon is often specifically linked with fat shaming, which uses humiliation to exact a form of bullying. In more recent times, body shaming has become increasingly unacceptable in the public eye, and many of Fraser's fans have rallied to support him. The bullying of Fraser perpetuated by the tabloid media was only made worse by the fact that Fraser was physically unable to maintain his once-athletic physique. 
This was because he was struggling with a number of extensive health issues, many of which required regular hospital visits. Brendan Fraser's time as an on-screen action hero came at the expense of his physical health. Around 2008, when filming was underway on the third Mummy movie, he had adopted a daily routine of covering himself in ice packs and tape, specifically choosing thin and light ice packs which could be concealed under clothing. Fraser's dangerous approach to action filming originated during production on 1991's Dogfight, his first movie. Fraser later told GQ that he likely bruised a rib during one stunt, but reacted with an attitude of, That's okay. I'll take it. I can do it again. If you want, I'll break it. Over a decade and a half later, this was taking a severe toll. Fraser's body became so badly damaged that he needed to spend seven years repeatedly visiting hospital after hospital for numerous surgeries and procedures. The worst of these were extreme. He required multiple back surgeries to repair damage to his spine, as well as a partial knee replacement, which both must have also required physical therapy and considerable recovery time. Additionally, he underwent a throat operation to repair his vocal cords. All of this was costly and, according to the New York Post, led to some financial difficulties. Worse still, he was also bound by law to pay alimony and child support payments to the eye-watering sum of $900,000 a year. In 2016, Brendan Fraser's appearance in an interview on AOL's Build channel left many viewers concerned. Soft-spoken and seemingly downcast, many fans worried that he was depressed. Speaking later with GQ, Fraser explained how he probably didn't even realize how he was feeling at the time, but during the interview, he was grieving the death of his mother. He also admitted that he'd been keeping out of the spotlight for so long that it was a shock to the system to be back in the hot seat. Oh, this is how it works. Hi, kids. Um. <laughs> it had been some time since Fraser had made a formal press appearance, and the show he was promoting was one he had barely featured in. What's more, the format of the AOL show felt new and unfamiliar. In his own words, I felt like, man, I got old. Damn, this is the way it's done now? It was as if the world had kept on turning without him for the whole time he had been hidden from the public eye. Even The Mummy, the franchise he was most famous for, no longer involved him. The 2017 movie was a reboot starring Tom Cruise. It wasn't until 2018 that Brendan Fraser finally spoke out about being a victim of sexual assault. And even then, he was hesitant to do so. There is, of course, good reason for this. Survivors often have trouble coming forward for many reasons. Fraser's was that he struggled to contend with how the assault made him feel and that he didn't want it to become a defining part of his life. For 15 years, he kept quiet until he was finally empowered to say something by the Me Too movement. Brendan Fraser joining the Me Too movement, opening up about allegedly being sexually assaulted. It's something that took him almost 15 years to talk about. Fraser spoke quite candidly about the difficulty of saying anything at all, explaining that he'd wanted to many times, but had talked himself out of it. He explained, Am I still frightened? Absolutely. Do I feel like I need to say something? Absolutely. It wasn't until he saw others he knew speak up that he felt ready to add his voice to the movement. Brendan Fraser has always been best known for starring in action movies. In 2022, he was supposed to make his triumphant return to the genre with the release of DC's Batgirl. When he was cast in the movie, Variety reported that he would be playing the villainous Firefly, a vengeful and nihilistic pyromaniac. In the comics, the more famous version of Firefly was abused during his youth. Driven to poverty and with nowhere else to turn, he developed an obsession with fire and took up work as a professional arsonist. While Fraser himself is decidedly unvillainous in real life, it's easy to imagine how his involvement in Batgirl may have been informed by his own experiences in life. Aside from the alleged abuse he suffered at the hands of Philip Burke, Fraser also experienced a number of financial difficulties during his life. Following his divorce in 2009, the actor was paying $900,000 annually in child support and alimony. He tried to petition the courts to reduce the payments because of his lack of income, and in return, his ex-wife Afton Smith accused him of fraud. She claimed that he had hidden $9 million in new film contracts, even as he was losing thousands every month. It's obviously not a direct parallel, but the experience of feeling financially trapped may well have inspired Fraser's performance as Firefly. Sadly, 
we'll never know for sure. In August 2022, after filming on Batgirl had been more or less completed, the movie was canceled by Warner Brothers. The decision to can Batgirl was deeply disappointing to everyone involved, with Fraser specifically concerned that it might hurt his comeback efforts. Still, he remained selfless about the whole affair, graciously praising his co-star Leslie Grace, even as his return to the action genre went up in flames. With all of his life experience, it makes sense for Brendan Fraser to choose a project like The Whale. His character in Darren Aronofsky's psychological drama is a reclusive man affected by weight gain, both of which are issues that Fraser has experienced firsthand. Unfortunately, however, the movie was met with some controversy over Fraser's use of a fat suit in the role. Prosthetics like these have a deeply unpleasant history in cinema, with critics claiming that they have mostly been used to perpetuate fat phobia. Speaking with Vanity Fair, Fraser made a point to explain that, unlike the harmful use of bodysuits in comedy movies of the past, the portrayal of fatness in The Whale is not intended to be a joke. He told the outlet, I looked at other bodysuits that had been used in comedies over the years, usually for a one-note joke. Whether intended or not, the joke is, it defies gravity. This was not that. The actor himself clearly took it seriously too. During filming, he reportedly worked closely with the Obesity Action Coalition. Having mistreated his body for his work in the past, and having been a target of fat phobia himself, it's possible that audiences might remain sympathetic about what would otherwise be an extremely questionable creative decision. Either way, the Academy didn't seem to mind. In 2023, 20 years after the beginning of Fraser's career decline, his performance in The Whale won him an Academy Award for Best Actor. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, please contact the Crisis Text Line by texting HOME to 741741. Call the National Alliance on Mental Illness Helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI-6264 or visit the National Institute of Mental Health website.